お前は一週間後に死ぬって。In 1998, one of the most influential Japanese horror movies ever premiered. It was Hideo Nakata's Ringu, which was undeniably a huge success with its cultural impact on modern Japanese cinema. It launched a popular trilogy, followed by some remakes and reboots that keep appearing yet to this day. But in this herd of ring movies, there is one which tends to be forgotten. A movie that for some reason has been buried by the box office and replaced with a brand new one with intentions to pretend that it never happened. That is Rasen, aka Spiral. The original sequel to Ringu. You see, a film production company Asmic Ace had a plan. A few years prior to this, TV network Fuji TV had made a film adaptation on Koji Suzuki's novel Ring. This V cinema called Ringu Kanzanban got quite a positive response, so it didn't seem like a bad idea to make another film adaptation, but this time for the big screen. So, They brought in director Hideo Nakata and screenwriter Hiroshi Takahashi to make a movie based on this book. But they didn't stop there. Author Koji Suki had at this point already expanded his successful debuting novel into a trilogy. The production company thought they might as well make a film adaptation on his second novel, Spiral, while they were at it. They gave the mission to Joji Ida, who'd previously been involved with the script for Ringu Kanzenban, though this time around not only write the script, But also direct the sequel to Ringu. The idea was to have these two co installments premiere at the exact same time, so people who liked the first film could have the option to immediately go watch its sequel. A brilliant idea. Well, no. Considering that the production company would bring back the team behind Ringu to make a brand new sequel the following year, that is Ringu 2, Rasen must be pretty bad, right? Well, that's not really a yes or no question. It definitely differs from Ringu in many ways. For starters, there is a new lead, with our former protagonist Reiko Asakawa not even being in this, besides some brief footage from the previous film and this. I'm pretty sure that wasn't actress Nanako Matsushima though, but yeah, Reiko is dead from a car accident along with her son. This man's name is Mitsuo Ando and is played by the very talented Koichi Sato. He's a pathologist and not a very happy one. Already in the first scene, you learn that his son tragically drowned in the ocean and that he's now suicidal. This dramatic intro instantly sets a remarkably different tone to the first installment, and this is just the beginning. It's yet another working day, and he finds out that his next autopsy is of his former coursemate, Ryuji Takayama, who we saw getting killed by the evil Sadako in Ringu. And this examination is just the beginning of a series of bizarre events that is about to come. Miki Nakatani makes a return in her role as Mai, who also has a much bigger part in this film, even though the actress seems to wish otherwise. She was Ryuji's girlfriend, so the police ask Ando to interview her to find any useful information on this strange case. She tells him about how Ryuji and his ex wife Reiko, who's now also dead, were investigating this videotape, a videotape that is cursed and kills whoever watches it after seven days. As a scientist, Ando has a hard time believing a curse could kill anyone. They do start bonding, however, both having lost beloved ones and hook up. Another familiar face that makes a comeback here is Reiko's former colleague, Yoshino. After the tragic accident, he's been snooping around in the last work she did and is eager to tell Ando about the mysterious videotape and that it was created by a woman named Sadako Yamamura. Ando then receives an actual copy from this shady journalist and decides to watch it. Then this happens. Just as he finishes watching it, he gets a creepy vision of a naked woman that starts licking him. Yes, that was Sadako Yamamura. This woman. But more on that later. Ando has experienced more than enough strange things for him to not believe that the curse is real now. But for some reason, he's still alive after seven days, and the sudden disappearance of Mai causes even more head scratches. As it turns out, Sadako, who normally just tends to kill her victims, has much greater plans this time around. So, what went wrong? Why would they go so far to have this film tossed away and replaced with a brand new one? As I said earlier, it's difficult to give a straight answer to that question. I will say this it's not terrible. As a matter of fact, in terms of the story and entertainment value, I actually find d a s e n to be better than its replacement, Ringu 2. But there is a problem it just doesn't match Ringu. Nakata brought us a solid horror movie where we're introduced to this serialistically eerie universe, and to go from that to this, from that to this, 
and from that to this isn't what you as a viewer would expect or hope for. Joji had no interest in making a horror film, but rather a science fiction that would thoroughly give us scientific explanations to the mysterious oddities that Ringo gave us, explaining the horror as Ida described it in an interview. And in his defense, that is what the original novel Spiral did too, so this wasn't a completely deranged decision. But when I say that these two movies don't match each other, it's more than just them being of different genres. They have such divided aesthetics in general and look nothing like each other visually. Dingo's simplistic and classic Japanese cinematography has been replaced with a more American thrill-inspired style, with brightness and intense shaky camera work, and there are even bigger issues with the plots. The script is filled with goofs that just clashes with significant pieces from Ringu, and these series are most likely due to poor supervision of these two projects, so I will not give Joji the hard time for that reason. If we overlook the fact that this is Ringu's sequel and instead just evaluate its qualities as a movie alone, I guess I would classify it as a okay movie. The story is decent enough, but perhaps a bit confusing when the brilliant but complicated plot of the novel has been converted into a movie script. Frankly, I'm not so sure if the story of Spiral is suitable as a film whatsoever, and the things that made total sense when reading the book feels a bit strange, if not silly when actually watching it play out on the screen. Also, Ida made some changes from the book that makes absolutely no sense. Unfortunately, I can't ventilate my biggest frustration as it is a major spoiler. But it's very dumb. Other than that, there's nothing special about its cinematography. There are some cool scenes that stand out. But overall, it's a bit wishy-washy in its execution. I would say that the strengths definitely are in the acceptable entertainment value and a great performance by actor Koichi Sato as Ando. In conclusion, Rasen being a flop at the box office is most likely due to it not working as a sequel. As a movie alone, it's watchable. Nevertheless, it's an interesting part of the Ring franchise, and for those who enjoy the other films, this hidden skeleton is something to check out. Thank you for watching.